Sabrina. Come on, Chloe. Chloe. Hey, Sabrina. Come on, Chloe. Come here, Chloe. Chloe, you want some pretzels? Who wants to be a hobo? Any hobos? Hi, Charlotte. Hi, Catherine. Hello. Chloe, come here. Chloe. Hi, Joanne. Hi, Ellen. Hi, Patricia. Oh, crap. Chloe, you want to be a hobo? You want to be a hobo? Come on, hobos! Chloe, hobo! Come on, Rhonda, hobo. Come on, hobo. Come on, hobo. Come on. Come on. Come on, hobos, come on. Come on, everyone wants to be a hobo. Hey, get my glasses, hold on. Oh, I have some glasses up there. Come on. Hobo, come on, who wants to be a hobo? Come on. Come on, hobo, Rhonda. Rhonda is decidedly not a hobo. Come on. I'm gonna lose you in the elevator for a brief second, so bear with me. Hey, you wanna be a hobo? Everybody's a hobo. Everybody's a hobo. Hi, Patricia, hi, Ellen. Yeah, Rhonda's sleeping in the Rhonda room. <laughs> she has her own bedroom. All right, I lost the internet, but stay with me, stay with me. Hello. Come on. This is sleeping outside. They're hoboing it up. Come on, hobos. Come on. 
You want to be a hobo? Come on. Hobo. Come on. Ready? because in January of 2017, the intelligence community came out with a high confidence assessment uh, that said the Russians were favoring Donald Trump and denigrating Hillary Clinton for a number of reasons, but chiefly because they understood that Trump would do their bidding. Trump was their guy in 2016. Trump remains their guy uh, in 2019. And it was certainly in their interest, but there's another... Yes, elevator fixed. Ready? Uh, boy, on a day like today, is it a good privilege girl. Uh, to be able to do this work and to be able to talk about what we have just seen as a country. All right. Uh, so buckle up. Um, Intelligence Committee Chairman Adam Schiff is going to be joining us in just a moment. You will be wanting to hear Ready? from him. This is the uh, first time I will have had a chance to speak with him since today's landmark hearings. Uh, but in order to sort of set the stage for talking with him, I want to start with the very basics. I want to start um, my favorite place to start, which is at the end. <laughs> I want to start with the bottom line. Come on. I'd like to see if we can broaden the aperture at the end of the hearing. From your testimony today, I gather that you believe that knowingly accepting foreign assistance during a presidential campaign is an unethical thing to do. And a crime. And a crime. And to the degree... And a crime, given certain circumstances. And to the degree that it undermines our democracy and our institutions, we can agree that it's also unpatriotic. True. And wrong. True. Knowingly accepting foreign assistance during a presidential campaign is a crime in certain circumstances. According to Special Counsel Robert Mueller, it's a crime in certain circumstances. It is unpatriotic. It is wrong. It is unethical. And, you know, coming from a person who said repeatedly today that he was blocked by Justice Department policy from bringing an indictment against the president, even if he had wanted to, you know, maybe that rings a little hollow him to say, yeah, that, that might have been a crime. Maybe it is, you know, just interesting, just dismaying to hear the actions of the President of the United States described as unpatriotic and unethical and wrong. But maybe that's just a, a, a bummer, you know, like maybe that's a terrible thing to hear about your, your country and its leader. Uh, except Special Counsel Mueller made clear today under close questioning that there is more to it than that. The need to act in an ethical manner is not just a moral one, but when people act unethically, it also exposes them to compromise, particularly in dealing with foreign powers. Is that true? True. Because when someone acts unethically in connection with a foreign partner, that foreign partner can later expose their wrongdoing and extort them. True. And that conduct, that unethical conduct, can be of a financial nature if you have a financial motive or an illicit business dealing. Am I right? Yes. Yes. If you have behaved in an unethical, unpatriotic, wrong, potentially criminal manner when it comes to another country, that's not just gross. That's not just a dismaying thing that somebody might say about you. If you have... Yeah, Charlotte, she's really good. ...by that foreign power they can use what they know about you. They can expose your wrongdoing and extort you. You're compromised. And if somebody associated with a presidential campaign is compromised by a foreign power, that just doesn't compromise that person. That puts our country at risk of being compromised by a foreign power. Even if it's not the presidential candidate himself, but especially if it is. In the case of Michael Flynn, he was secretly doing business with Turkey, correct? Yes. 
And that could open him up to compromise that financial relationship. I presume. He also lied about his discussions with the Russian ambassador. And since the Russians were on the other side of the conversation, they could have exposed that, could they not? Yes. If a presidential candidate was doing business uh -oh. in Russia and saying he wasn't... No, 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 no. The Russians no. could expose that too, could they not? Come here, come here, come on. Come on. There it is. Go get it. Go get it. Go. Come on. Sabrina. Right over there. Sabrina. today, we would get from Robert Mueller over the course of these seven hours such a blunt accounting from him, a blunt, unequivocal accounting from him on, on, uh, on who in the president's campaign was compromised by Russia and how, specifically how they were compromised by Russia, including the president. Dmitry Peskov, the spokesperson for the Kremlin, someone that was in contact with to make that deal happen. Your report indicates that Michael Cohen had a long conversation on the phone with someone from Dmitry Peskov's office. Presumably the Russians could record that conversation, could they not? Yes. And so if candidate Trump was saying, I have no dealings with the Russians, but the Russians had a tape recording, they could expose that, could they not? Yes. That's the stuff of counterintelligence nightmares, is it not? Our answer to that was that... something that's very important to the nation. Did your investigation evaluate whether President Trump could be vulnerable to blackmail by the Russians because the Kremlin knew that Trump and his associates lie about connections to Russia related to the Trump Tower deal? Uh, I can't speak to that. I can't speak to that. Did your investigation evaluate whether Trump could be vulnerable to blackmail by the Russians because Trump and his associates were lying? about that deal and the Kremlin knew it. And as Adam Schiff put it, they might have tape recorded their conversations with the Trump organization about that deal that the president was lying about. They could have blackmailed him that way, right? Did you look into that? I cannot speak to that. So we'll take that as a maybe, right? 
Uh, a lot happened at this historic testimony today. Uh, special counsel Robert Mueller definitely seemed older than his 74 years. He oh, he's less great. on top of matters, so he's I up think, there. than anybody who has worked with him in the past and uh, appeared to have expected in terms of his appearance today. Um, there had been the Justice Department threat ahead of today's testimony that Mueller shouldn't tread outside the bounds of his report and shouldn't talk about uncharged third parties and shouldn't talk about any decision-making processes. And he Come didn't on. reference those boundaries at times today, but he surely went outside them at times as well. And he did so in ways that, it's, it seems to me, point these sort of neon big bright arrows toward what we couldn't and didn't get from him today that it now seems fairly imperative to chase down. Given the unrelentingly dire descriptions he gave about the president's conduct and the conduct of the president's campaign and its ongoing implications for the country. It seems like they gave us two big directions today that feel imperative in terms of what we try to figure out next and the paths that we next follow to try to get to the bottom of this still open scandal. The first one is that Mueller's personal performance today, I think, puts a spotlight on the man who is sitting next to him and not speaking today, his deputy, Aaron Zebley. He's described now as the deputy special counsel. Uh, we're now told that he ran the day-to-day -day operations of the investigation and the rest of Mueller's staff. Uh, there was so much that Mueller seemed sort of detached from today, and he seemed to be, at times, taking it on trust that certain things were in his report or not, whether or not he personally recalled those things. Because of that performance from Mueller today, I think that lights a fire under the need to speak to the people on his team who actually did the work. I mean, if Congress really does want more substantive and detailed answers from the people who actually did that work, it would seem like they would have to pursue conversations now and testimony now from Zebley and from the other members of Mueller's team, including those who were sitting behind him in the, in the hearing room today and, and, and those who we've seen involved in the various court cases and those who we know were, were on his staff. So we will talk more about this later on over the course of this hour. But I think one of the outcomes of today's hearing is going to be a renewed interest by Congress in hearing from the people who were on Mueller's team and did the work beyond the sort of distant figure and figure of Mueller himself, which was revealed today by what I think was a sort of surprising happen. The second thing um, that I think is going to No. And much to my surprise, Robert Mueller affirmed the money stuff. He affirmed the financial motives of the president and his closest advisors that led them all into compromising positions with Russia. But when it came to following those financial paths in his investigation, following the money, it seemed for Mueller today like maybe he and his team didn't do No. That. Don't get wet. No. Other than Trump Tower Moscow. No. or detail the president's financial ties or dealings with Russia, correct? Correct. Similarly, since it was outside your purview, your report does not address the question of whether Russian oligarchs no. engaged in money laundering Come on. through any Come on. of the president's businesses, correct? Get up there. And of course, your office did not obtain the president's tax returns, which could otherwise show foreign financial services, correct? I'm not going to speak to that. Special counsel says he's not going to speak to that. The special counsel did not address or detail the president's financial ties or dealings with Russia or any potential Russian money laundering through the president's business. Uh, special counsel today would say nothing when it comes to the president's tax returns. Your office did not obtain the president's tax returns, which could otherwise show foreign financial sources, correct? I'm not going to speak. Good night, everyone. Hey, Margo.